all the talks are recorded and for those of you who want to watch them again or for those of you who are unable to make it and want to watch it um, at a different time we have quite a few viewers from other countries and you can watch all the talks on YouTube and those of you who are developers and you would like to chat using this new and exciting tool called Slack we do have a uh, Chapter London team uh, channel and you can join owaspslack.com now we run these events, we try to run uh, and I, every two months, usually they are on last Thursday of the month, uh, today is not last Thursday of May, but this is because we'll pay our host Sevasta to be here today, because that's when the venue is available, and obviously for the first time in history of OWAS, we're broadcasting live on Facebook live stream, so we'll see how it works, so people who are watching us on Facebook, you can actually like and actually uh, add comments and questions and hopefully we'll be able to pick them up and ask our presenters to answer them when we have the Q&A session. Yeah. Can't swear <laughs> um, yeah, it's public, yeah, you can't swear. Um, there you go, so that is the page that you need to go to, uh, OWASP London. Um, so, um, this is the agenda for tonight. Um, I hope we all managed to grab yourself some food and drink and done a bit of networking. I see some people talking, some of them in strange language. And a strange language is actually Greek, so we're having a bit of a Greek night tonight. Because uh, by complete accident, I can assure you, both main speakers tonight, they're Greek. Okay? So if you, if you like a uh, Greek accent, I love it, right? So there's going to be a lot of it tonight. Okay? And uh, yeah, so the, um, uh, after uh, Sheriff and I, we'll do a bit of an update on who we are, what we do, and uh, all the future conferences and events coming up. Uh, we'll have Dr. Frakos presenting his uh, threat modeling against payment system, which I think is very, going to be very popular for you at WorldPay. Uh, we'll have Dennis talking about the summit in between and about new OWASP Top 10. Then we'll have a break and I'll have a bit more uh, drinking and we'll try to finish off the sandwiches. And then uh, Apostolos is going to talk about deserialization attacks in Java. So for those of you who are Java developers, uh, is going to be very, very relevant. This is going to be quite a technical talk. If you're not a Java developer, but you're a developer, or you want to, or you're a security architect, and you want to know how these attacks work, it's also a very interesting talk for you to find out. And then Edwin will have another lighting talk, and we'll try to kind of change the subject into a different problem of how do you actually get developers to write secure code without thinking too much about it. So, and that will be it, and then we're all going to go to Old Bar One next door for more networking and hopefully more beer. Okay, so first of all about us, so who is OWAS? We're a global non-profit charitable organization, and uh, our aim is we want to improve software security. And we existed since year 2000 now, so for 17 years. Uh, we are completely vendor neutral. We are supported by vendors, we are supported by sponsors, but uh, we are vendor neutral, and uh, we pride ourselves because we believe that we have the collective wisdom of the best minds in application security worldwide because the foundation is global and we uh, collaboratively develop and we provide free tools guidance and standards for all of you all our meetings including this one they're, they're free and beer is free uh, don't be put off by the word chapter meeting this is not like annual general meeting this is actually a technology seminar, and the main reason why we call it chapter meeting because well, we are the London chapter, and we're organizing this, and if we just call it an event, uh, technically speaking, we can charge money for it. If we call it chapter meeting, we can't. So that's what it's all about. So there are over 160 chapters worldwide of OWASP, and this figure sort of floats in between 140 and 200 because new people join and some people leave. You will understand why. So there's a map of UK. You can see where we are in the UK. And there's an interesting um, gap here at the bottom because there's absolutely nothing down south. So if any of you is an application security enthusiast, then they can volunteer some of their time and set up a chapter like that, let's say in Brighton or Southampton, please come and talk to us because we would love to have some chapters down south. At the moment, there's nothing. There's a lot of stuff uh, in the Midlands and up north. Of course, we are the biggest chapter here in London. Um, we are all volunteers. This is all done in our spare time. We are not paid for any of this, for organizing these events, for presenting talks. Um, and there are 45,000 of us worldwide in every single country of the world. Now, there is a membership, and the membership 
uh, is individual and corporate. So you don't have to become a member to come to our events. You are very encouraged uh, to become a member, but you don't have to. Anyone who is interested in cybersecurity and application security can come and join these events. But um, we would like you to become a member. It's only 50 US dollars a year. So whatever the exchange current exchange rate is, it used to be very good. Now it's not that good. Uh, <laughs> but still, it's a, it's a contribution and it's a donation because this will allow us to continue running these events, to continue to provide free tools, guidance, and lots of projects for you uh, to use. Okay. Uh, as a member benefits, these are the things that uh, you will enjoy as members. So, you, first of all, of course, you need to support our ethics and principles. You can underscore your awareness of application security within your company. So for those of you who work uh, for WorldPay, you would like to join OWASP and say, hey, I'm not just using OWASP tools and guidance, I'm actually a member and I support and uh, you can see how important it is for me. And you can also, of course, uh, increase your value and knowledge and expand your skills, collaborate with uh, like-minded people worldwide on projects, which is also very cool. cool. Everything is open source. Um, another very big advantage of becoming OWASP member, you get exclusive discounts, sometimes up to 70%, and sometimes it's free, to attend very big cybersecurity events in UK and worldwide as well. Uh, so it's actually quite good because you get exclusive discount codes for members. Uh, recently we had a conference organized by, actually by uh, uh, one of the members of the audience, and it was 900 pounds a day, and it was free for OWASP members. So it was really, really good. Um, of course, uh, your membership is also donation, so you donate to chapters and projects. Uh, another cool thing a lot of people don't know, and I encourage you, if you are an OWASP member, I know a few of you are OWASP members, you get an OWASP.org email address, which is very cool in my opinion. And of course, because you are a member, you can vote. You vote on all issues, how to shape OWASP community, um, and which direction we need to go to. So, uh, there's an additional advantage, oh, so all this for $50 a year. Additional advantage is, uh, I don't know if you got the stickers, if you're a member, you get the sticker for a laptop. I know a lot of people like stickers on a laptop, so you can get one of these. Um, and uh, uh, yes, uh, in terms of the um, membership, if you represent the company, you can see the logos of all the companies who are members of OWASP and support us. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will recognize your logos on this page and I think on the next page which is premium members these are organizations which donate 20,000 US dollars per year I know we have uh, representatives from at least two companies here who uh, donate this much to us so thank you very much in terms of uh, our chapter in London you can see these are the companies who support us and obviously uh, WorldPay is one of them because you host us tonight so um, thank you very much and actually, I think Mustafa from WorldPay wanted to uh, say a couple of words and welcome us all here. Thanks, Sam. Right. Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, thank you very much for giving up your evening to come and learn a bit about application security. So uh, a couple of things that are customary. Uh, first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Mustafa Kasmani, and I lead the application security team here at WorldPay. Uh, second customary thing is to talk about fire exits. If in event of a fire, fire alarm going off, exit behind me, double doors and straight down. Uh, third customary thing is to tell you a bit about WorldPay. And uh, I don't have any slides about WorldPay, but if you look at the fantastic wall art that we've got, it uh, should give you enough information about what we are, who we are, what we do, etc. And if you need any further information about WorldPay, quite a few of my colleagues are here. So if you'd like to all just put up your hand if you're a WorldPay employee, quite a few guys. So come and talk to us if you're interested in finding out more about us. Of course, yeah. So if you haven't visited the loos already, uh, again, straight out the double doors and turn right. Right, yeah, and almost back on yourself in that corner. Excellent, thanks. Right, so um, application security. And application security at WorldPay over the past three years has changed quite a bit. Um, initially, we were very compliance driven, um, so security by compliancy, it, didn't, it doesn't work very well, we think. So we decided that, you know what, it's probably better to have security by design. And what's key about security by design is um, establish, uh, establishing really good uh, collaboration with uh, your development organization, your architects, your um, 
and basically the business at large. And this is what we've done, and it works quite well. Um, we are still, we are still um, progressing along that route because you can always do more in that space. Um, we recently set up a application security champions network, and maybe it might be a topic for a future talk. But for now, I think the uh, the lineup is really fantastic. Enjoy the evening. Enjoy the uh, drinks and the uh, snacks uh, network. And um, thank you once again. Cheers. So, for those of you who don't know what we do, a uh, very important thing is books. You see, the wonderful books which are all available for you for free. Uh, code review guide, uh, guide. If you'd like to review the source code for vulnerabilities, this book will tell you how to do it. Uh, if you're a developer, we have a developer's guide which actually tells you how to code in a secure manner. And if you're a tester, pen tester or QA guy, we have a testing guide for you. And these are well, one of our most popular books and guidelines released. And uh, if you are a mobile app developer, a mobile app security tester, we've got books and standards for you as well. So we've got mobile security testing guide, or MSTG, and mobile application security verification standard, or MASVS, available. And just recently we had an update to software assurance maturity model and actually one of the, well, our next speaker is one of the original authors of that fantastic uh, maturity model and the standard which is used by a lot of organizations worldwide. Uh, speaking about tools, the most popular tool we have is called OWASP ZAP. So that is a penetration testing tool which allows uh, you to find vulnerabilities in web applications. And my colleague and colleague there, Sharif, is actually a product manager of that tool, so I think he's going to tell us a little bit about all the new features which recently been released. Thanks, Sam. So this year, what we're trying to do is actually go into a, a cadence of actually making feature releases around every quarter for uh, Zap. And uh, this um, in April, when we released uh, Zap 2.6, one of the big items that we released is. Um, the uh, JXB browser. Have, has any of you uh, heard of this before? Okay, so basically what it is is um, it's a um, it's the Chrome browser but wrapped um, in a well in a Java wrapper which means that you can actually install it on different uh, platforms without having compatibility issues. This is really important for Zap for several reasons. Um, as you know, their new um, plan, you know front-end uh, frameworks, JavaScript is getting really popular. So you end up with frameworks like Angular or um, React, um, uh, JS, um, Vue of JS, and a few others. The problem with them is if you're crawling these websites and they have all this mobile code, sometimes you can't actually go and crawl them properly unless you can actually read the DOM and uh, the way a browser understands it. So what Zap has done in the past is actually create APIs where you can connect to Chrome or something so it can understand it. But you need to set it up and it, it's a little bit of a hassle. So what we've done in 2.6 is actually include uh, a browser in Zap. And once you turn it on, it um, understands sort of um, uh, exceptions for, um, uh, sorry, SSL certificates and it runs passively automatically, which means that you have better crawl uh, capabilities once you turn it on. And that will also allow us to uh, analyze DOM-based cross-site scripting and we'll build features on top of that from day one. So the good news is it's there and we're gonna be updating regularly. On our next release, the, sec the thing that we're focusing on is stability. So at the moment, um, like Burp or a few others, um, it's um, Zap was made sort of a, as a user, as a GUI um, uh, tool. So if you're running like a large website, sometimes it can crash if it doesn't have enough memory or so forth. So in order to provide um, stability, we're building a backend database uh, support. So that way that um, it can actually scale to a much larger um, uh, support. So hopefully that will be done by the end of uh, June, depending on how we get on with the sprint and every uh, release will be actually adding more features to improve that. Thank you. Okay, okay. so those of you who uh, were here last time probably all this in this, so I'm gonna throw in a couple of freebies for everyone who's attending. I'm gonna give links to two free eBooks, okay? So uh, if you were at the previous event, you've already seen this one. This is Essential Node.js Security. 
Um, so it says, hands-on and abundant with source code for a practical guide to secure Node.js web applications. Uh, I set up a very uh, convenient short link called bit slash ly slash free Node.js book. I will show this at the end as well. And um, this is a new one. So it's provided by one of our sponsors by Checkmarks in association with OWASP. So this is the Go. The Go language is very, very popular recently. Uh, a lot of applications have been written in it. And yes, there is a how to code security in Go guide as well. And uh, there you go. It's actually an open source book uh, hosted on Gitbook, which means you don't just read it, you can contribute it if you're a um, Go expert. Yeah, and there's a very short code to download it, bit.ly slash go slash SCP, or Secure Coding Practices. Okay, very quick update on the conference that I just returned from, which is, was OWASP Application Security Europe 2017. It was in Belfast. Um, uh, so um, it was a huge conference over two days, and basically it was just like today, but two days of non-stop talks over five different tracks all at the same time. There was a developer track, there was a hacker track, there was a CISO track, there was a pen test track, there's lots of information, uh, good information there. However, I've only extracted two very important things for you to know from that uh, conference. One is our project which is called Juice Shop. So this is a relatively new uh, project called OWASP Juice Shop. And it's actually a vulnerable Node.js application which has now been set as a tournament as well. So if you guys are using Node.js for our applications, you can actually train your developers and have a bit of a tournament. So there are 13 new challenges released. And the project leader for um, uh, uh, the um, Juice Shop, um, a guy called Bjorn Kimmich, who was at the conference as well, uh, very kind of written this guide called How to Own a Wasp Juice Shop. And uh, yeah, it's very, very good for developer training. So I urge you to go and check it out. And there's one other very important project, which is now an incubator stage, is this cute little dragon. Finally, OWASP is going to have a threat modeling project, which is currently an incubator, and it's called OWASP Threat Dragon. So, uh, yeah, it's all available on GitHub. It's currently incubated. It's at the beginning stages. It has a very, very cool web-based diagram editor, and you can uh, create models of your threats online, uh, and it is all for free, which is very, very good. Um, uh, another very big thing which happened there is a lot of discussion. OWASP top 10, this is what we're known for, top 10 vulnerabilities, is changing. The new version release candidate has been released last month in April, and it is causing a lot of controversy, a lot of questions. A lot of people are crying out and saying, what's going on? Hey, OWASP, this is not right, okay? So what's actually happened is, as you can see, OWASP A7 was merged with A4, and we now have a new A7 and A10. So A7, new A7 is called insufficient attack protection. So a lot of people think it's a bit of a um, give in to vendors and say, oh, is OWASP no vendor neutral? And A10, which is actually quite important for WorldPay, because a lot of payment systems use a redirect. You go to a website and you click on a button that says pay now, it redirects you to WorldPay. So if attackers uh, hijack that redirection, you're screwed, right? So uh, for some reason, uh, apparently based on a popular vote, that vulnerability has been removed from top 10 and it's now been replaced with underprotected APIs. So please, if you disagree with this, you have to submit your feedback. The feedback session is still open, will be open until 30th of June. This is the email address to send it, send it to OWASP top 10 list and you need to make a suggestion. So if you're suggesting to change the top 10, make sure you include a complete list of 10 items along with rationale for all the changes. Okay, so the next big thing which is happening is our OWASP summit in June and Dennis Cruz is one of the organizers of the summit is gonna talk about this great event that we're gonna have at OWASP. I'm gonna quickly change the presentation over to Dennis. Okay, so I'm just gonna try to do this in a couple of minutes. Again, breaking records. Yeah, yeah. I need to come to this side and I'll move your laptop, don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, so the last summit 2017, you guys have been heard about it. We kind of 
come up with this tagline, the Woodstock for AppSec might not be the best one. We'll see, you know, if, if it uh, turns out which, which part of Woodstock. Um, <laughs> we're going to be in the woods, right? We're going to be in the woods, right? And it's going to be a massive major gathering. We're going to basically pull off an event. It's going to be quite special, right? So um, it's basically, you know, this um, high concentration of people that want to solve problems. It's, in a way, it's one of the unique things that OAS can create in this environment where we're all going to be there to collaborate. So in fact, who's going to be there from here? So we already had a couple of guys who are going to be there, right? So uh, for the ones who are not going to be there, you're going to miss a, a something quite spectacular. And I'm going to walk you guys through it, right? So we already have a whole pile of tracks. We have about actually about 120 working sessions. A, a large chunk is going to be dropped. But you can see the covers that we have. Um, ironically, following up, you know, the thing we actually are going to have a great environment to talk about the last top 10. And you can see that we're not pulling any punches, right? We're going to have working sessions about the unprotected APIs, the insufficient attack protection, the data behind it, the implications. Is the OS top 10 collection open? Because that's the question. So we're actually going to have a session about it. And uh, we're going to have hopefully a signed ceremony at the end where we hopefully will agree after five days of, of you know, kind of talking together. And then what well, should be added again? And there's actually going to be a couple, a, couple, a couple of others that are going to be added to it. We already have a schedule, which is again, if you know from the previous summit, is actually quite a breakthrough in 20 days to go. And um, and you can see that we're phasing them out. So Monday and Tuesday is going to be this one. Then we're going to have probably some of the most amazing brains on threat modeling in the planet are coming to here, right? If you guys some of those names, those guys have written books about it. They have been the thought leaders about this. So if you care about threat modeling, this is the place to be. And you can see that we're going to tackle really, really powerful things from diagramming to templating to schemas to how to do it. So this is the, I'm, the one I'm most excited about because I think this is going to make a massive difference. And the whole thing about the summit is to create things. We're actually now focusing on the definition of done. Every one of these working sessions will have to deliver something or else you won't exist. No presentations. There's no presentations, right, at all, right? Although actually, you know, I was actually thinking that we might do like a little mini TED talk where you can have five minutes to defend the new top 10. But, but that would be about it, right? But it's all about collaborating. It's all about people in a room working together around tables to figure out something problems, right? Again, so this is actually quite spread out. So this is going to be probably one of the most active tracks that we're going to have. All, there's a lot of great, amazing horsepower. The security playbooks is actually something very interesting because it's all about creating repeatable processes, about uh, something that we can actually follow when there's an incident, when there's due diligence, when incident response, how to deal with ransomware, right? How to deal with security monitoring, all this stuff. So this is again is really interesting, and I'm, I really think this is one of those we're going to create a lot of actionable things so you can actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, we want you guys to share and collaborate and tell us how you do it, right? This is a, a good opportunity to do that. Oh, as Sam, so, uh, so, uh, uh, assurance maturity model. Uh, also, some of the key players are coming, and we, you know, we're breaking into across DevSecOps, another massive track, which again, how to automate our stuff, how to make it work together. Security crowdsourcing, very important at the moment. Uh, just even to give an idea what we're doing this. So, for example, some of the topics are already scheduled. There's non-scheduled working sessions from there. What it means, it means that we're not going to support it on the main conference hall, but the whole thing is based on lodgers. So we're actually going to be talking application security from 7 o'clock in the morning or when you wake up all the way to 2 o'clock at night, right, when you go to bed, right? And, and the lodgers are actually all designed to have meeting rooms. And basically, we're going to be talking about this throughout the night, right? Um, Agile, AppSec, which is also quite interesting, how you integrate that, you know, how, to, how do you put security in your portfolio Kanban and save channels, all that stuff. The CISO track, which is quite interesting to me at the moment, and other guys are going to come. So again, how do you deal with and it's very interesting problems and issues that are very real at the moment. And of course, final but not least, we have the OWASP projects. There's a whole pile of OWASP projects that are going to try to do a lot of great stuff in there, right? And again, that's screwed out throughout the building. Now, this is our first pass of the schedule. So again, you know, it's too rough. And for the guys who only come for a couple of days, make sure that the stuff that you want to do exists there, right? So this is the give and take that we're going to do for the next couple of weeks. This is the people that are coming. Already some of the most important, interesting names and powerful people uh, from a knowledge point of view, right? In our industry, uh, you can also participate remotely. We're going to support you from a point of view of there's going to be somebody who's going to be there assigned to you. I'm going to put you on a screen. And you know, I'm kind of hoping that Google Hangouts and Skype is going to hold quite correctly. And we're going to have some extra bandwidth for it. And, and we're already doing the scheduling and all the stuff. So these people are coming. And you can see that every person that's going to go is going to have a personalized schedule. And that's the point. Now, we want to make sure that we get the best out of the talent that comes to the summit. Right? Uh, again, ticket starts at 100 quid a day, so again, it doesn't break the bank, right? And uh, uh, basically, you, what you really want to do is either go for the whole week or even stay there. So that's for the whole week, that's when you stay there. So again, you, know, we, you can see that we basically try to make it as easy as possible and as cheap as possible from a kind of a, a full day conference. Uh, and we have a discount for 10% to 20% if you think more teams, because what we're doing is 
this is some example of some of the emails we saw thing is that you can actually let's say that you want to bring 10 people you can actually bring two guys for um, 24 hours uh, eight guys for uh, and then the, the day ticket and that's 4,400 you can basically for example do what I did for photo box which is get for 6,000 you get actually 10, uh, 10 people 12 people to go or what happened so that was capital one sir and this is actually what I did where you know for that amount I actually get the, my whole team so and also one of the things interesting is once you get more than six people you get a villa and you can actually use it as an offsite which is actually what I'm going to do right so you actually can use it as team building exercise you can do a lot of interesting stuff but also bring a lot of people into it so there you go so the last term is going to be the lack concentration upset security talent and focusing on solving problems in 2017 the question is are you guys going to be there right and this is us on the last summer excellent thanks very much Dan. thank you <laughs> Okay.